everyone, Marcus Dahl here, and today I want to go into part two of the three-part series I have on Virtual Reality Touch. In part one of this series, I explained why we want Virtual Reality Touch within our systems. However, I didn't go into how we can achieve Virtual Reality Touch at this moment in time. This unfortunately is where the problems begin to arise. We don't exactly have many technologies at this moment in time that can help us in the immersion of the sense of touch throughout the entire body. The most widely used method of providing some haptic feedback in our current systems is linear resonance actuators or vibration motors. These don't exactly provide the most high fidelity sensations that most people are expecting whenever they hear the idea of touch. This is all ignoring the fact that they all basically do not touch the sense of thermoception, nociception, or stress reception at all, really. Even with just mechanoreception, everything is far from perfect. Does this mean that there's no hope whatsoever for obtaining VR touch? Not exactly. At this moment in time, there are quite a few technologies actually that we could improve upon and iterate on in order to achieve a desired effect. I'll subdivide the three possible technologies I see in mind right now into worn technologies, wireless technologies, and stationary technologies. None of these methods are perfect at the moment, and they each have different benefits at their core. So let's get this started off with the very first category, worn solutions. The item that comes up in most people's minds whenever they think of worn solutions is usually something along the lines of a VR suit, a worn article that is basically innervated with different motors in order to stimulate the senses at any different points. In this case, most suits would probably have something like electrotactile arrays or vibration motors in order to help you feel the sense of touch at any location. This technology may actually have a lot more fruit in the future as we start applying more and more technology into our own clothing, being that this does seem to be the decade of wearables. In the future, the technology may even get so well that even the fabric itself will be the technology that stimulates the body. That being said, there are a few things of virtual reality suits that a lot of people don't take into consideration, namely that their full body tactile requirement essentially limits their usage to certain particular users. A full body coverage would mainly require something along the lines of a full body onesie that has the feet included as well as gloves and the face. That's a pretty significant fashion statement to say the least, and that's probably going to reduce its mainstream coverage. To make matters worse, full on suits would probably be inconvenient to be worn unless they're worn all the time or integrated into our regular clothing. Without that, it may be too much of an inconvenience or possibly a little bit risky to try to put on something like that. Even in the book Ready Player One, the virtual reality gloves that were being used had to be handled with some degree of care as they could suffer some damage. Next up, let's go into a wearable technology called Ristify, which was developed by some MIT students that has caught my attention thanks to the post by a commenter in the comment section for one of my past videos. Thank you very much for the tip, 7 Rare. The technology uses a thermoelectric heatsink to cool or heat one part of the body to spread the thermal sensation across the rest of the body, essentially providing thermalception without too much cost in electricity or being particularly big. Still, at this moment in time, unfortunately, the technology is only a prototype, though it is planned to enter the consumer space sometime in the future, though when, we aren't sure. Let's move on out of wearable technology and move on to wireless solutions that have the benefit of not needing to contact the user's body at all. In terms of that, I've seen the AI Real technology by Disney, which uses air blasts to create the senses of touch. The technology has some problems as it can be very accurately directed. Unfortunately, it creates a very loud sound every single time it's used and it doesn't cover or account for stretch reception and in a way for thermal reception. Another wireless solution includes ultrasound pulses. In all honesty, I'm not particularly knowledgeable on this one, and the only drawbacks I've observed from the demos I've seen seem to be that you need a large array in order to achieve it, and I'm not very particularly certain on its abilities to stimulate thermal and stretch receptors, but I will keep an eye on this one for its growth in the future. Lastly, let's go into stationary solutions. For these, I'd say some high-end gaming chairs or some kind of specially designed systems can allow for some pretty impressive and immersive techniques. This is probably the most long-tested technology for this that there is, mainly with a lot of simulations using big rigs in order to simulate the desires that they want, such as having a flight simulator or driving a car around. These are unfortunately limited by the sheer cost effectiveness of their design. They'd only be effective for a single type of software, and even then, that software would probably have different nuances between the items which would reduce immersion considerably overall. In the end, the only other solution that I can possibly think of at this point would be to actually do the actual IRL thing to you in order to have you experience a thing. Like actually shooting a fireball at you in order to simulate the sensation of a fireball. But then again, 
I'd say that's more the realm of augmented reality. So does this spell the end for VR haptics in the near future? Far from it, I'd say. Right now, I have an idea for VR touch that could allow you to stimulate any part of your body using just a certain small area of your skin right on your head. In the end, if you were to combine this with something along the lines of EMG technologies, as well as EEG technologies, we could theoretically have nerve gear this year if everything went perfectly. But then again, we could have time travel if somebody came up with a miracle. It's all untested, but I think I want to describe the idea anyway. For that, let's look forward to part 3. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope that you've enjoyed the information I've shared with you. If you would like to contribute to the conversation, please! Head down to the comments section and share your thoughts. Well, this does it for me. Mark Stall, logging out.